Then that a prophet will be getting drunk, then getting naked, then lying down on the ground where a son walks in and he sees his father laying naked on the floor. How are the people going to follow this prophet? Don't you think it would have been easy for the, those who rejected Noah? Now we both believe in Islamic Christianity that God drowned those who rejected Noah. Don't you think it would have been a valid excuse for them to tell Noah, Hey man, you're telling us to believe in God? You are lying naked, drunk on, your, on the floor of your house? Right or wrong? This, will be a, this is a justified reason to reject him. You cannot discuss that anymore. That's as bad as it gets. I mean, you want me to follow you? And this is your, your condition? So this is very fundamental to understand because when we give the prophets and messages this particular view, then how do you not blame those who rejected them? It becomes valid. Actually, this person is to be rejected before someone else. But this is because these, this were not, these were not their characteristics. These were not their way of life. It gets worse. In Sam, 1 Sam, chapter 19, verse 23, and the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and he too stripped off his clothes, and he too prophesied before Samuel, and lay naked all the day and all the night. Again, in 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verse 20, David dances naked before the people and before the Lord. It's sad. Isn't that sad? To claim that the prophet of God was dancing naked, not just dancing. You might as even do you, your mind as soon as it starts to produce an image, you want to stop. Right, Sarah? No, no. Think about a hamburger, think about a pizza, think about food, but don't think about a prophet. Dancing naked. Why? Because it just, it's repulsive. It's unacceptable. But it is quoted. So how are these people to be followed according to this definition? I don't think so. How about this one? Lot, Lut in Islam, he commits incest with his daughters. Hasha. Way above that he is. It says in Genesis, Old Testament, chapter 19, verse 30. Lot went up out of Zohar and dwelt in the hills with his two daughters. And the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to come to us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, yani we will sleep with him, that we may preserve offspring, offspring through our father. So they made their father drink, wine that night, and the firstborn, the older one, went and lay with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she arose. He was too drunk to know what's going on. And on the next day, the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve offspring to our father. So they made their father drink wine, that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him. And he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. How? How is that acceptable? That a prophet of God will have a relationship with his daughter? That's a big no. Unfortunately, these are from the Bible. What are we trying to aim at? That although we share the qualities, the titles, and the belief in messengers, look at the Islamic definition versus the Christian one. Then you choose on the Day of Judgment which one you want to meet your Lord with. Do you want to meet him with this, this belief about the messengers or the Islamic one? And Allah will hold you accountable for what you have in your heart right now. Allah knows what each one of us conceals. So you may fake it off and pretend that you didn't hear or say that I am being offensive or I am trying to attack you. You may say whatever you want to say. But on the day of judgment, Allah will hold you accountable for this information and how you handled it. Whether you were sincere with yourself seeking the truth and the proper belief system or you were following the 
multitudes of the people, even if they are misguided. More, in Genesis, I'm not going to quote you now the details, I'm just going to give you the titles for future reference. In Genesis chapter 38, verse 15, it mentions that Judah had committed adultery with his daughter-in-law. He committed adultery, he thought she was a prostitute, he started speaking to her, and he eventually he had a relationship with her where she became pregnant with his own daughter-in-law. And also it mentions David having a relationship with his neighbor's wife. In 2 Samuel 11, chapter 11, verse 1, he quotes him being on the roof shouting, or he was on the roof, then he seen a woman shouting, he said, oh, what is this woman, bring her to me. He found out that her husband is his neighbor, he got him killed after he slept with her. Got a long story. This is what they call in modern day pornography. This is the one that is X-rated, that, you know, the internet usually, in this kingdom, Canada, they prevent you from going to these particular sites, because this will destroy your character. This will demolish you, and you become obsessed with these particular things. So anyone who may read this, you may, you may understand why the people will have this kind of uh, lifestyle of, of being extremely open uh, and, and, and having you know, relationships with the other gender is something that is very normal. Because if the prophets and the messengers, who are the examples to be followed, were doing this, then what did they do for the rest of the people? If a prophet of God is going to see his wife's neighbor and, then, you know, and, and have a relationship with her, what did they do for the common person? So obviously, they are not examples to be followed in the Bible, but they are examples to be followed in Islam. And you will never find a single negative attribute attributed to the prophets. They may have made mistakes in what? In judgment between what is good and what is better. Pay attention. In judging between what is good and what is better. Judging between the people based on the knowledge that they had. But anything beyond that, they were ma'sumin. They were protected by Allah. They can never be the worst of the creation because they are the best of the creation. They are the best of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is uh, equivalent whether it is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi being on the top of the list, or whether it is Jesus or Moses or Abraham. All of them, David, Solomon, all of them shared these qualities which made them uh, superior to the rest of the creation. So anytime we accuse them of something that makes them uh, inferior to the creation, then we have misunderstood our pillar of faith, which is a belief in the messengers, and we must make the right modification and adjustment before we meet our Lord. Because this is unacceptable belief system. Furthermore, fourthly, belief in the last day. Or fifthly, belief in the last day. Muslims and Christians believe in the last day, the day of judgment. In the Quran, Allah says, ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ لَمَيِّتُونَ ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ تُبَعْثُونَ Verily, then afterwards, all of you shall die, everyone will die. Then on the day of, on the day of resurrection, you will all be resurrected. So this is established in all over the Quran. It's needless to, I just quoted one verse, there are thousands of verses that deal with the belief in resurrection and the Day of Judgment. And this is something that is also available in Christianity. But, when it comes to the concept of heaven and hell, uh, there is a major difference depending on the Christian denominations. The Muslims hold the belief system that heaven is eternal. It is a place of rest of all the human beings who during their lifetime submitted to the will of God. Or those who died before accountability, like those who did not reach the age of uh, discretion or puberty, those who were not accountable like the children. And anyone who lived life was saying, not someone who was insane, because these are not held accountable either, someone who's, you know, uh, mentally handicapped, someone who's insane, crazy, or whatever other titles they may be given, these are not held accountable. Any human being who had the right sanity, then if he believed in God and in the six pillars of faith and in the current messenger that he had, if he submitted his will to the will of Almighty God, then he is among the inhabitants of paradise. In Christianity, we will find some biblical texts which say that only 144,000 will enter paradise. Only 144,000. And everybody else cannot go there. Now this is the, uh, the belief system of some of the denominations of Christianity, I know not, not all of them. Nonetheless, 